Green, can he get in? No, he cannot. Warner to throw. Going deep downfield, adjusting for it is Isaac Bruce for a touchdown. They rewrote NFL record books and bridged the gap from the 20th century to the 21st. They piled on the points and racked up wins while dominating the league for three years. They were fast, flashy, and explosive. They were the greatest show on turf. This is the story behind the 1999 to 2001 St. Louis Rams. To understand how strange it was that the NFL's must-watch team at the turn of the century resided in St. Louis, you must first understand how futile and largely irrelevant the Rams' existence had been. Entering the 1999 season, the team hadn't appeared in the playoffs since 1989, when the franchise was housed in Los Angeles hadn't appeared in a Super Bowl since the 1979 season, and hadn't won a championship since a pre-Super Bowl era NFL title back in 1951. In the team's first four years in St. Louis, the Rams posted four losing seasons, compiling a cumulative record of 22 and 42. The franchise was an afterthought in its own city, let alone league-wide, and was coming off a four and 12 season in 1998. Unbeknownst to St. Louis and the rest of the country, however, some of the pieces necessary to construct one of football's most iconic and successful teams were already in place, including quarterback Kurt Warner, receivers Isaac Bruce and Asahir Akeem, as well as head coach Dick Vermeil. Some tweaks, and perhaps a wrong turn in the right direction, were needed to get there, though. During the 1999 offseason, Vermeil hired offensive guru Mike Martz to be the team's offensive coordinator. Martz, who had previously worked with the Rams and helped Bruce develop as a star wideout, was working as Washington's quarterbacks coach, where he helped develop Trent Green. The Rams also brought Green from Washington to St. Louis that offseason, with the hopes he'd be the team's starting QB, while Warner moved up the depth chart from third stringer in 98 to Green's backup in 99. The Rams also sent two draft picks to Indianapolis to acquire Marshall Falk, and drafted wide receiver Torrey Holt sixth overall. An offensive juggernaut was in place, but Warner's unlikely emergence was at the heart of St. Louis's turnaround, with the journeyman quarterback taking over as the Rams starter when Green suffered a season-ending knee injury in the third of four preseason games. Just don't like to see it. That's Kurt Warner, a second-year player out of Northern Iowa. Before Warner arrived in St. Louis, the undrafted QB had a brief stint with the Packers, played arena football with the Iowa Barnstormers, and quarterbacked the Amsterdam Admirals of NFL Europe. The guy stocked shelves at a supermarket after being cut by Green Bay, and missed out on a tryout he had earned with the Bears because of a bug bite sustained on his honeymoon. Suffice to say, no one was expecting much from a Rams team coming off a four-win season when Warner was tapped to replace Green. With all that in mind, opponents, fans, media, the NFL as a whole, had no idea what hit them when Warner and the Rams got off to a hot start, opening the 99 season with three wins by a combined margin of victory of 73 points. Up fake, Holt, great catch, touchdown! The rookie! Kurt Warner put that right where he could catch it. But there were still plenty of skeptics when 3-0 St. Louis hosted San Francisco in week five. The Rams had lost 17 straight to the 49ers, who had won the NFC West in 12 of the last 13 seasons. The Rams also hadn't won a home game against the Niners since 13 years earlier in Los Angeles. If the surprise team of the early season wanted to prove it was for real, this was the game to do it. And did they ever. They go first and 10 from the 14. Warner, pump fake. Into the end zone, touchdown Isaac Cruz. Warner and Bruce connected for TD passes on each of St. Louis's first three possessions, coasting to a 42-20 victory that put the football world on notice. He'll go in again, his third touchdown of the day. Within five years, Warner had gone from grocery clerk to Sports Illustrated cover boy. The hits just kept on coming as the Rams got off to a 6-0 start, winning every game by at least 17 points before suffering their first loss of the season to an equally upstart Titans team in Tennessee. 
By the end of the year, St. Louis was a 13-3 juggernaut that won the NFC West by five games and secured the conference's number one seed, earning home field advantage through the NFC playoffs after a perfect 8-0 season at the Trans World Dome. Football purists were rooting for the Rams to fall flat on their faces, though, as the team's pass-happy attack rankled football purists. You can't imagine how blistering the critics were, Marx told Sports Illustrated in a 2017 feature. It was like we defamed the Pope. But there was no arguing with the results. The Rams scored 83 more points than any other team. Their average point differential of plus 17.8 was more than six and a half points clear of the next best team, as they also boasted an underrated top four defense. Warner threw for over 4,300 yards and a league-leading 41 touchdowns compared to only 13 interceptions, completing his stunning rags to riches season with an NFL MVP award. Falk finished fifth in rushing, led the league with 5.5 yards per attempt, and took home Offensive Player of the Year honors. Bruce's 12 TD receptions were just one shy of Chris Carter's league lead. Vermeil was named Coach of the Year. Everything about the Rams screamed unstoppable force as the postseason kicked off but nothing would come easy in the playoffs. Perhaps the bye afforded them by their regular season excellence left them rusty, as the Rams actually trailed the Vikings at halftime of their divisional contest before exploding for 35 points in the second half en route to a 49-37 victory. Touchdown pass. That's Roland Williams. It's like shooting ducks in a barrel. The Rams then proved they could win ugly in the NFC Championship, something skeptics still wondered about St. Louis at the playoffs approach, surviving the dominant defense of Warren Sapp's Buccaneers in an 11-6 triumph that was sealed by a 30-yard touchdown pass from Warner to Ricky Prohl with less than five minutes remaining. Going deep, touchdown, touchdown, Ricky Prohl in the corner. Waiting for the Rams in Super Bowl 34 was the Steve McNair, Eddie George, Javon Curse led Titans team that had handed St. Louis its first loss that season. Just as they had throughout the playoffs, the Rams bent, but never broke. When Tennessee put together what was at the time the biggest Super Bowl comeback yet, rallying back from 16 down to tie the score in the final three minutes, Warner and the Rams responded with a championship winning 73 yard touchdown pass to Bruce. 27 yard line, Warner to throw. Going deep downfield, adjusting for it is Isaac Bruce, and Isaac Bruce threads his way for a touchdown. 73 yards. Well, you couldn't have written a better script for the MVP of the league. He throws a beautiful pass in the face of pressure. The first and only Super Bowl victory in franchise history was famously preserved by what is now simply known as the tackle. In regulation. It is caught by Dyson. Can he get in? No, he cannot. Mike Jones made the tackle. And the Rams have won the Super Bowl. For his efforts, Warner was named Super Bowl MVP, becoming just the sixth player to win regular season MVP and Super Bowl MVP in the same season. Vermeil, meanwhile, retired on top after a life in football, although his retirement lasted less than a year before taking over the Chiefs. In his place, the forward-thinking March was promoted to head coach. In putting together the most stunning one-year turnaround in NFL history, the Rams became the first dome team to win a Super Bowl. But they weren't done running roughshod over the league, at least in the regular season. And the team's reputation as an offensive powerhouse, combined with their home games being played on the Trans World Dome's turf, led to one of the great nicknames in all of sports. While presenting a highlight package of a 57-31 demolition of the Chargers that brought the defending champion Rams record to 5-0, ESPN's Chris Berman quipped, Forget Ringling Brothers. The Rams are the greatest show on earth. It didn't take long for Earth to be replaced by Turf. On the field, er, um, Turf, however, the Rams' high-powered circus act was about to run into trouble. Warner broke his hand in a Week 8 loss to the Chiefs, St. Louis's first loss of the 2000 season, and just the team's fourth loss in 26 games since Warner had become a starter. In a reversal of roles from the previous season, Green took over starting duties and kept the Rams' offense humming, with Warner returning later in the regular season. 
That aforementioned underrated championship defense of 99 became the team's Achilles heel in 2000 though. As while the Rams continued to score at record levels, they suddenly bled more points than any other team on the other end. Even with the reigning MVP missing a chunk of the season, the 2000 Rams scored 540 points, what was at the time the third highest total ever, and scored more offensive touchdowns than any team ever had. Between Warner and Green, St. Louis also totaled more passing yards than any team in history, while Falk took home MVP honors after an 18 touchdown season. And yet, the defensively challenged team went just 10 and 6, with a wild card comeback in New Orleans coming up short, and the Rams Super Bowl title defense ending thanks to this. The perfect scenario for the Rams, they're going to get it back with plenty of time left after the punt, which is fair, caught at the 9 yard line and then fumble at the 11 yard line and who has the football? The Saints do! It's almost as if Hakeem nonchalant at the catch. There's no almost about it, Al. He did nonchalant it. After starting the season 6-0, the Rams lost 7 of their next 11. In the aftermath, St. Louis remade its porous deep, cutting 9 of 11 starters, hiring Lovey Smith away from Tampa to serve as defensive coordinator, and using all three of its first round picks on defensive players. In addition, Green was traded to Vermeil's Chiefs, where he would remain in Kansas City for five years, earning two Pro Bowl selections. Elsewhere in Missouri, the greatest show on turf got back to looking like just that, throttling the rest of the NFL in a dominant 2001 season. Just as they had in each of the previous two years, the Rams once again opened the season with six straight wins, before falling to playoff foe New Orleans in a narrow week seven loss. St. Louis would lose just one more time that season, a seven point loss to the Bucks, completing a 14 and two season that saw them go undefeated on the road and clinch the NFL's number one overall seed, with their only two losses both coming by one possession. The Rams scored 90 more points than any other team in 2001, with the gap between them and the second ranked Colts equivalent to the difference between Indianapolis and 15th ranked Tampa Bay. Smith's revamped defense also showed up, as only six teams allowed fewer points that season. The 2001 Rams outscored opponents by an average of 14.4 points per game. And in addition to becoming the first team in league history to start three consecutive seasons 6-0, St. Louis also became the first team to score 500 points in three straight seasons. Warner's 36 touchdowns, 4,830 passing yards, and 68.7% completion rate resulted in a second MVP award in three years, with Falk's 2,000 honors sandwiched between. Falk once again finished top five in rushing in 2001 and took home another Offensive Player of the Year award, while Holt became Warner's favorite target and finished top five in receiving yards. Bruce joined them in the Pro Bowl, as did tackle Orlando Pace, guard Adam Timmerman, and cornerback Aeneas Williams. By just about every conceivable measure, that 2001 squad was the best of the bunch among those greatest show on turf teams. But unlike the 99 season, 2001 didn't end in hardware. After crushing Brett Favre's Packers in the divisional round and edging Donovan McNabb's Eagles in the NFC Championship, St. Louis entered Super Bowl 36 as heavy favorites against a surprising Patriots team led by a young quarterback named Tom Brady, who had taken over for the injured Drew Bledsoe earlier in the season. Warner hit Prohl for a 26-yard TD connection to tie the game with 90 seconds left, but New England completed the stunning upset on an Adam Vinatieri field goal that literally kick-started a dynasty. And it's right down the pipe. Adam Vinatieri. No time on the clock, and the Patriots have won Super Bowl 36. Unbelievable. The Rams outgained the Patriots by 160 yards in that game, but were undone by three turnovers, including two Warner picks, one of which was returned for a touchdown. It was a sign of things to come, as Warner, who had become more turnover prone in the second and third seasons of this three year window, struggled in his final years as a Ram before being replaced by Mark Bolger, though he'd eventually resurrect his Hall of Fame career years later in Arizona, where he led the Cardinals to the franchise's first Super Bowl appearance. The Rams went 7-9 and missed the playoffs in 2002, 
returned to the postseason in 2003 and 2004, losing in the wildcard round and divisional round respectively, then failed to make the playoffs again until 2017, by which time the franchise had returned to its LA roots. Bruce got the gang back together for a 2016 charity reunion event dubbed Legends of the Dome, which gave St. Louis one last chance to celebrate its most iconic Rams team before the franchise moved. They may not have dominated long enough to be considered a true dynasty, but two decades later, there's no denying the impact of those explosive, pass-heavy Rams teams. They ushered in a new generation of football while winning 37 regular season games and five playoff games in three seasons winning a championship while appearing in two of the most memorable Super Bowls of our time. They rewrote the offensive record books, had two different players combined for three straight MVP awards, amassed 19 Pro Bowl selections in three years, and entertained the hell out of us while doing it all. Dynasty? Maybe not. But they were, without question, the greatest show on turf. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button.